President Bola Tinubu has addressed Nigerians on his mandate to make the nation a prosperous and economically viable one. In his maiden New Year address to the nation, the president on Monday says he took difficult steps at reforming Nigeria's economy to avert a looming fiscal crisis. He also assured Nigerians that the harsh economic realities would not last long as his reforms would yield the desired results in 2024. And our lives in. we must lift up our hand to almighty god in gratitude for his grace and benevolence to our country and our lives in the year 2023 that has just gone by though the past year was very challenging one it was eventful in so many ways for our country, it was a transition year that saw a peaceful, orderly, and successful transfer of power from one administration to another, marking the yet another remarkable step in our 24 years of, of unbroken democracy. It was a year you, the gracious people of this blessed nation, entrusted your faith in me with a clear mandate to make our country better. However, Tinumbu highlighted the transients of the current difficulties, urging Nigerians to exercise more patience. The president says his administration is ensuring constant food supply, security and affordability by stepping up plans to cultivate 500,000 hectares of farmlands across the country to grow maize, rice, wheat, millet and other staple crops. The Nigerian leader adds that the recommendations of the Tax Reforms Committee he set up last September will be codified and simplified to ensure the business environment does not destroy value. From the boardroom at the Broad Street in Lagos to the main street of Kano and Nembe Creeks in Baeza, I hear the groans of Nigerians who work hard every day to provide for themselves and their families. I'm not oblivious of the expressed and sometimes unexpressed frustrations of my fellow citizens. I know for a fact that some of our compatriots are even asking if this is how our administration want to renew their hope. They are compatriots. Take this from me. The time may be rough and tough. However, our spirit must remain unbowed because tough times never last. We are made for this period, never to flinch, never to falter. The social economic challenges of today should energize and rekindle our love and faith in the promise of Nigeria. Joining us on the news is Elvis Akpobi, Executive Director, Not Too Young to Lead Initiative, and he'll be talking to us more about this. So thank you so much, Elvis, for joining us on the news. Thank you for having me. Happy New Year once more. Same to you. Now, how do you interpret President Balatinubu's vision for making Niger prosperous and economically viable? And what role do you see for young people in achieving this vision? For me, uh, it's um, the president's uh, message was um, give young people a, a pocket full of hope. But for me, it takes more than reading species, but uh, species. But this time we get into actions. And like he said, the Nigeria dream it won't be possible without um, both the citizenry and the um, leadership of this country. As young people, you agree. In the past four days, I've had like three friends that escaped Nigeria going to the shores of um, the Western world to, you know, looking for greener pastures. It shouldn't be so. Nigeria is blessed with um, natural resources. Our problems are just leadership problems that are caused by us. And there's vast inequality. So for me, as young people, since, since the president I've alluded to the fact that we gave him a mandate and he subscribed to an oath of office to give us an enabling environment and he's giving us a message of hope for the 2024. Let's keep our fingers crossed and, you know, see how they will put those species, 
those words into actions, despite we have a role to play in it. Because um, for us to have development, we must have a peaceful society. And for us to have a peaceful society, there must be trust between citizens and leaders. Well, we also see the uh, president's outline is mandate for the nation's economic development. So, uh, in your opinion, what specific policies or probably initiatives could be particularly impactful in empowering and involving the youth in this process? Firstly, he, the president mentioned about um, electricity supply. And if we can just have good roads, electricity, good electricity, uh, like we have stable electricity supply, and we have um, um, policies that will help SMEs grow, I think we'll do better. Nigerians are, young Nigerians are blessed with potentials and they do witty initiative. If you go, if you find out that once Nigerians leave the shores of this country, they do better. Even if they, once they come back here, yeah, if they are here, those that are here, they just need an labor environment where they can live their dreams, run their businesses and, you know, do well. But if you are a group, maybe, since we are not manufacturing anything and the Naira to dollar rate, it's very, very high. It has affected a lot of SMEs. But from the president's message, I think um, 2024 will be fruitful. Now, how does President Nobus address uh, align with the aspirations and concerns of the Nigerian youth? Of course, you've been a leader. And, uh, and what areas do you believe need further emphasis or probably clarification uh, to resonate better with the younger demographic? Uh, for me, it's all about, um, he already appointed young persons, the Minister for Youth Development, Minister for Youth and this Minister for State for Youth. They have a whole lot of role to play because as far as I'm concerned, at the moment, they are the bridge to which we will get to the presidency. And they should think outside the box to make policies that will benefit young people, young Nigerians. If we, the, this last, 2023 saw, about three Nigerians putting us on the world map in the sports sector. And there are other Nigerians too, who are, you know, doing very, very well across the shores of this country. So and means the bleakness, even the young Nigerians are doing well. I think it's only normal and it's only natural that back in Nigeria, they create safe places for Nigerians, young Nigerians to thrive and, you know, put Nigeria on the world map. We can't be seen, can't be seen on CNN and other foreign um, countries for only negativity. It's time we started seeing us and celebrating us. For positivity and all I'm pleading on behalf of millions of uh, young Nigerians is for those who have contracted governors to be it, presidency governors, lawmakers, and um, those that have been appointed to, you know, put Nigeria first, make policies that will create an enabling environment for young people to live their dream because our greatest potential for me is not crude oil like people think. Our greatest potential as Nigerians is in the untapped content, untapped talent of young Nigerians who lately have been exported to the Western world to develop the Western world. So it's time we put, put our heads together, create a labor environment where young Nigerians will develop Nigerians by themselves. But the Westerners will not come. It's only Nigerians that will develop Nigerians. And for me, it's young Nigerians that will develop Nigeria. They're still talking about um, policies, uh, considering the challenges faced by Nigerian youth, uh, such as um, unemployment, uh, access to quality education and the likes. Uh, what expectations do you have in terms of concrete actions being taken by government that should help or could help address these issues based on what the president has said and his mandate, of, of course? Hey, they should be, um, they should work towards um, always getting feedback, good from the presidency, the state and the local government level. Back in Delta State, um, I think um, by, by I think by February, the local government, um, the president local government administration should be rounding off. And for me, the local government level is the level at which it touched the ordinary citizens. I'm looking forward to the state government, the DSEC in Delta State, you know, making sure they, they make do policies that will bring in a new government. And for me, I want to, talk to urge party leaders to, to always select, put forward people who are in sync with their constituent so that it can affect the common man because the last the, the extra celebration made me understand that there's so much lack. 
Hello, Elvis. Not too. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, it's not too good for me, but gradually, like I've always said, is uh, gradually we'll get in a Euro dream. We've always wanted, but we will we'll need good citizenry, just like we will need good leadership. And the mindset of young Nigerians will determine how we we'll get a better Nigeria because the inequalities have made a lot of people not to look like where is it? they'll be like, where's the next opportunity? So when there's an opportunity to serve, everybody wants to amass weight. For me, it's not meant to be like that. Now, finally, we talking about. Like, uh, Okay, Elvis, finally, talking about um, good citizenry and um, active participation in governance, when we look at uh, the issue of inclusivity and representation, how can the youth actively engage with President Tinumbu's administration to ensure their voices are heard and are considered in the pursuit of a prosperous and, of course, an economically viable Nigeria? We live in the times of calling out. It's a democratic government. It's not an autocratic government where... Everybody seems to be scared. It's not a military government. We contracted governors to people who made them um, manifestos, who promised us that um, they'll give us employment, youths will be included. Back in Delta State, I think right on Honorable Sheriff Ogori has tried in including young people with character, capacity, and competence in his schools. And I think um, other governors should take a lead from that because peer to peer influence helps in keeping accessibility, helps in building confidence of young people. So the president itself already appointed a young minister. I, I, I was in a section with her December period, and I think she should be a bridge from between the president, presidency, and the young people. And it should subscribe towards accessibility. You subscribe towards developing young talent, which will in turn develop our economy. Mostly with the SMEs, but a lot of SMEs in in Nigeria, and they, they just need policies that will help them grow their businesses. Elvis Akobi, thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you for having me.